Hello everyone. So friends, this is a practice lab session in which I am going to show you how to configure a basic cluster. So the setup which I have for you, that is this one. I have a machine that is KVM based machine, kernel based virtual machine that is server.example.com which is having enough resources like memory is 8 GB or more you can. Processor 4, if you have a big setup you can make it more processors. And hard disk, I have two hard disks connected to my this machine. One is 20 GB, another is my 65 GB. So why I need more GB? Because I'm going to create the virtual machines from that. So KVM is basically, it's a full virtualization solution for Linux on x86 hardware virtualization technology like that is on Intel VT or AMD machine as well. So using KVM, one can run multiple virtual machines like your Linux or Windows machines, each virtual machine has private virtualized hardware that is your network card, disk, graphics, etc. So in my setup, I have one machine that is server.example.com and from that KVM machine, I am going to create three nodes that is node a.example.com, node b.example.com and my third is node c and these are my cluster nodes which is having the same operating system with same version, right? So the benefit of KVM is that you can configure it on your laptop as well. If you have a laptop which is having enough resources, like if you have 16 GB of memory or you have enough resources like processors, then you can do the entire setup at your home as well. So what are the steps required? First of all, you need to configure a machine for KVM. So very first step to install a KVM machine, you require these packages. So you need to configure the YUM at your environment and fire these commands and install these packages. It will hardly take few seconds. After that, you need to create a file system for disk image for your virtual machines. So you are going to create the virtual machines over to your KVM. So virtual machines, they need a space for the disk image where they are going to you know, install an operating system, right? So for that, you need to allocate a space. So from KVM machine, you have to create a file system. Third is create a directive for storing the ISO image of your VMs. If you're going to install a virtual machine like your Linux or Windows, so while doing the installation, what does it require? It requires the ISO image. So you need to put the ISO image at your KVM machine that is your server.example.com and after that networking you have to do the networking for your virtual machine so that whatever the virtual machine you have created like node A, node B, node C they have a proper communication they can communicate to each other for that you have to create the bridge network so let me show you how you can done this so this is the machine I have server.example.com I have already installed the packages and after that you need to create a file system that is already created here slash vm and you can see the space of my slash vm it is showing you know somewhere around 65 gb so that is the space that will be taken by your virtual machines like node a node b and node c and apart from that i have also created one more directory that is cvm1 and here i have the iso image so whatever the you know virtual machine you want to create, if you want to create a Windows machine, then you need to put the ISO image of your Windows. If you want to create Red Hat, then you have to put the Red Hat image. And uh, after that, you need to create the bridge network as well. So for that, you need to simply create a file. Let me show that. So I'm here. This is the location of my, you know, network configuration file at the last you can see that I have created a file that is ifcfg-bro this file is for the bridge network simply you have to create whatever I have mentioned here simply create it like this way okay and uh, here you have to allocate an IP and uh, the type is your bridge and I have already given an IP here so after doing this if you have a network card here you can see that I have a network card this one INS ENS 33 so I need to you know go to the same configuration file of that INS ENS 33 and here I have to type this bridge is equal to BRGO 
So BR is zero is my the file which I have created just now. So here I have to put the file. Here I have to put the entry for this BR zero. After doing this, nothing else. The boot boot proto is static, and uh, after that you just need to restart the network services. And after doing this, you can see that uh, an IP is allocating here, right? So this is what you have to do it for creating the you know KVM machine. So three four steps, which is very simple. Which is already here. You can refer to my this. You have install this. Create a file system, and create a directory for storing. You have to create a directory like slash vm1, and copy the ISO image, right? And then networking. After the after that, you need to simple fire this. Okay, here you can see that I have created few machines. That is node A, node B, and node C. So how we can create the virtual machine? It's very simple. Click on this button. This will open. I create a new virtual machine. Select this option. First one, create ISO image. The ISO image which I have copied here. Here you can see that this is less VM one. Okay. So I can select from here. This is my ISO. I have selected this one. Choose window. Choose volume. This is automatically detect operating system. If if it is not detecting, you can select manually as well. Forward, and this is the memory and CPU settings. I am taking one GB memory. CPU is this one. Forward, and uh, the disk image of your virtual machine. I want to select manage, and that is in slash VM. If you remember, there is a file system I had created this one. So here you can select this one. You can see the location is slash VM. Right, and uh, plus, okay, and you can give any name here, the name of your virtual machine disk, okay, and uh, what capacity you want. If you want to give 15 GB, you can give it and finish. So choose volume done, okay, forward, and uh, the network selection that we have already created BR zero. It is by default it is taking this one. And after that, you need to put finish. The installation has started now. Now you can see that the installation has been started now. Now I need to select what language would you like to use during the installation. I am choosing English India. Continue, and the date, location, everything is. You have to select from here. So that is okay now. Asia, Kolkata, installation source, installation. I am taking a minimum install here. Partition. This one. This one I have taken. automatic partition and network i am choosing this one connected and the name i am giving for this host name is node d dot example dot cam apply why i am taking node d because node a b and c i have already created this done and begin installation i need to do the setup for that password for root password I am giving Reddit, okay. So the installation is started now, and my three nodes, that is uh, node A, node B, and node C, is still running. Here you can see that I have given the name of this is CentOS seven point zero. It has taken the default name. Later we can change it. So three nodes is already running. I have already taken the putty session for all the machine. This is my node C. This is my node B and this is my node A. Now, what is the next step? The next step is to you know make our 
system, node A, node B, and node C. It should be passwordless authentication. Let me move towards my PPT. The next step is create the virtual machines. I have already told you what are the steps for that. So simple, you have to create right click and the steps which I have shown you, you can create the virtual machines. After that, you need to create the passwordless login. For that, you need to create SSH key gen. So the steps are very simple. You can see I'm just logging to my node A. So very first step that is SSH-keygen and you can use this RSA. It is telling that it is already there. You want to override, yes. So after firing this command, what will happen? You are in this location. I have logged in as a root. This directive will be created here. And here you will see that a file that is this public file will be created. Public key is created. Now I need to copy this file, this id underscore rsa.pub to all my nodes, node B and node C. And in the same location, I need to put it the same file. But the name of the file, when I copy it, it should be copied as a authorized underscore keys. After that, you know what will happen? The login from node A to node B would be passwordless. If I'm trying to log into node B as if it is asking for the password, I want that it should not ask for any password. For that, what I need to do, I just, you know, copy this file. So to copy this file, the command is this one, uh, cat and id underscore rsa dot pub and ssh root at the rate of node b and cat and this I want it should copy as a authorized underscore keys or you can simply you know copy this file you can scp and after that you can move that file as a authorized underscore key as well so this has been copied now again if I am trying to log into this node you can see that it is not asking for any password so what I have done here I have simply copied this file and put it in this location I am in this location if I am going into this directory you can see there is a file this authorized key and if you we'll cut this file, you can see the entry for that at the last, you can see that. So this entry I have added. So this is the same entry. If you'll see here, this entry is same as my, this entry. I'm in node A, right? You, you can cross check this entry is same as mine. And the same I need to do it for my node C as well. So. I am copying the same file and instead of node B, I am putting this and SSH node C. You can see that passwordless authentication has been started. So this is what you have to do it from node B as well and from node C as well because I want that all the servers if you are sitting on node A and if you want to go to node C, it should not ask for any password and if you are sitting at node C and if you want to go to node B and node A it should not ask for any password. So do the same exercise for all the nodes. Okay, once we will be done this, we'll move towards the cluster part. What are the packages required for the, you know, pacemaker cluster. So thanks for watching and if you have time, please join with the next lecture.